Greetings family, uh, this is Bomani Tamba and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community uh, meeting. And today's date is January 22nd, 2023. So happy 2023 family and looking to uh, get uh, things going on our Black Star community. We just came back from another one of our Ghana tours, uh, 22nd Journey for Lifetime to Ghana, where we went to the land itself uh, on December 29th and then showed our, our group members that were traveling with us and uh, one member that was traveling with us for the first time to actually see their land. So that was the last time that uh, we physically went to the land. I have videos up uh, so far, most of the videos up, and I have uh, pictures up in our WhatsApp page and uh, some of the videos up on YouTube and, and I'll upload some more photos. But uh, that's what we do, uh, try to just document our journey and our connection to build this community. Uh, it's uh, been a long process, but uh, when we're going from the ground up, it's what it is. Uh, that whole town that everybody sees now, when I first went there in uh, 2009, December, uh, almost none of what you see existed. It's just that uh, foundational. So with that situation, um, our goal is to find the means and figure it out on our own, how to develop and build this community. Uh, and it's just on all of us and more so those who just, you know, want to do the work, uh, trying to call more people to just take part in anything that they see fit to work. Uh, right now, myself is uh, stuck on working on registration and survey and to make sure that um, our surveys get done fast, efficient, so we can all start building or start planning to build. So that's been the major delay, unfortunately. And so... Now, uh, with these things, uh, once you work them out, uh, we went to a whole sequence of working things out to make sure that everything that we're doing forward now in paperwork is a lot more efficient. But these are the things that you go through uh, from it taking months to get whether it's the incorporation or several months to get certain other documents. But honestly, little by little, over the period of time, we've gotten, you know, we've gotten things done. So when you're on the land, you'll see people building, they have their complete survey sign stamp. Only thing we have to do is get them their final registration so they can get their title and deed. And uh, those things sound good and easy, but uh, it's you just have to keep on working with your people in the Lands Commission. So we have um, another survey that's, um, that we're looking to get to work with our current survey. And then we have a new consultant that we have working with our existing consultant so we can speed things up. And our goal is to, Figure out a lot of things on the land. Um, how can we work together as a group to really just develop uh, this community? Uh, we join a process to where we, we, you know, all of us have plots. So the, the money we put down, we have our plots of land. So now we have to just figure out how we want to build it and what we want to build. But along with building, you know, we all realize that hey, we need some roads, we need some, you know, need some walls, we need some lights. We need the, the basic things that, um, you know, we used to see, you know, once you see, you know, you step out wherever you are in America and you see land being cleared, all these things are organized and put together. But I also told everyone up front that we never had all these things figured out. The goal was for us to work with those of us who have certain background and those who also want to do some research and then also find a way out to get external help and then, you know, work with other groups of people. So. Throughout the time frame, it's been a whole lot of recruiting from recruiting builders, recruiting people who are specialists in sustainable living and consistently just networking with people. And the more we just keep on working together at this, then the better. Uh, sometimes we look up and it's not all 50 plus of us in conference calls. Only thing I can say is, you know, I do understand that people have their situations and, and things like that. But those of us who have the strength to keep it going, just keep going and hanging in those who need to take a break or just need to just play a layback role. It's all good. Uh, well, we're at the point where the goal is just to make things work by just working together. And whatever issues and problems that we come up on or have is to talk about it and definitely not put it out there online. Um, our goal is to not uh, repeat another year like 2022 or 2021 uh, where, you know, where we just, you know, where, we're trying our best to this, let people understand that, you know, we're dealing with African continent. Uh, we all need to, groups of us need to stick together on projects and stick together on things and make things work. There's too many people that go and come back, too many failed projects, too many people go and there's things don't work out and it doesn't have to be that way. So people like myself, I've seen what works and what doesn't work. 
and what works is group economics, but it's easy to say a group economics work, but can you really get a, a, a bunch of individuals to work together, whether they're hardcore into pan-Africanism or they're just into you know, African roots and culture? Uh, so that's what we have to figure out. And you're telling people that we have to look at what everyone else is doing. I've been across all of the different parts of Africa. What I see is groups of uh, Indians, Chinese, Lebanese, and so on. You name the group, and you know they just figure things out. Uh, note that some of them have been there for a few generations, so that's you know some of the advantages that they have. While we were here, uh, struggling during the civil rights movement, uh, they were making certain moves, so they do have the advantage. But they go in South Africa and so on. They're a lot more established, especially the Indians. They just all over Africa enterprising. Uh, so, so we have to figure those things out. And I'll tell people one thing you always get from me in Azebo is regardless of whatever goes on in our lives and things, we're going to keep on pushing and keep on just making things work. Because um, at the end of the day, man, what you're looking at is, is work. You know, I know when we were presenting information about, you know, about building a community, living and doing business in Africa, traveling to Africa, and enjoying paradise, it sounds beautiful. And it is beautiful. But at the end of the day, if we really want to have a town where you know we have black ownership and where we have things established to where we're building our own ecosystem to where we can just enjoy the paradise that we need, then that's where we have to come up and figure it out and build things. So for those of us, whether you know you're working with your nonprofit organization, you're working with your chamber of commerce, you're working with um, uh, investors that you're networking with. Um, looking for more of our energies to connect with uh, those people. And then we can always have private meetings and things like that. Throughout the time frame, I'm here in Georgia and you know, wherever I can get a meeting or two in to connect a network, whether it's with some of my Morales brothers or certain people, you know, you're consistently just pushing this energy and it, uh, you know, and, and you get fur further and further. Uh, but it's one of those things where people who have professional techniques and how to do all the things that we're trying to do, those are the people that we're looking to work with. Uh, but it's not that easy as far as it's getting them. So when people can do referrals, rec do recommendations, we're open to those things. Uh, so that's just a um, broad, quick overview on our current stance on the land. And our chief uh, is there. Uh, we've been through situations where we had to prove ourselves, prove our paperwork and things like that. And I tell people that we're still here. Um, we have our members, Linda and Carmen, they follow the, the blueprint layout of what we have. You join one of our tours. We take you to Africa, connect you. Then we get you some land and then you build your home. Uh, so, so they're one uh, example of one of few examples of you know people who have followed that process. So now trying to get the rest of us to do that, but at the same time too, the ultimate thing is building out the community. We have a business and technology center where uh, once we work out how we're going to build it and get it set up, those of us that are in the, in that world can you know work there. Or and it's also a place where we train our young generation of students and children, because we're running a complete technology and business operation, whether it's tours, investments, or whatever other projects that we get involved in, uh, that's our command center. Then the community center, which is perfect for, if you know, for, for those of us who have their connections with different nonprofit groups, we can make that work that way. So the community is set up in a way where we can just make certain things work. We just have to figure out those fine details to get right to the point with everyone, because I know sometimes people see the videos and they're wondering, you know, why is why why is there not more? Why is there not this and, and so certain certain things, so on and certain things. And definitely, you know, I get it. And you know, most of us are not used to seeing things develop like that, but that's how things are developed in Africa, unless you have upfront funding or unless you literally just work things out. So our model of corporate economics, membership dues, or us coming together, putting uh, development budgets together. Those are the things that we had uh, organized in our mind. And what I'm going to show everyone is on the newsletter, we have 10 committees. Uh, those are the committees that, you know, we volunteer to join and then work together in groups. All of that sound nice, smooth, and easy. But, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier before our recording that during the COVID era, when we were limited in movements, it was easier to get people involved. And now people have been moving. Uh, so, I don't know how those uh, committees are going to go, uh, which, but um, whether we're in a committee or not, uh, the work has to be done. So we just have to prioritize things. And those of us who are available to work on things, we can uh, work on it. Uh, now, before I open things up, what I want to do is just, uh, go through some of the documentation for those who are watching and are not familiar with any of our information. 
I'm gonna do a short um, few screen sharing. All right, so the first screen sharing uh, is our website, africaforafricans.org. And this is uh, a designated website uh, that uh, showcase uh, or share all of our Africa tours and our investment project, which is uh, mainly Black Star Pan-African community. So as soon as you uh, get on the website, um, you click on the link that say Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community, and you'll see all of these files. And these are files that I can send, in, send to you via email, along with attachments. And it's a lot of details, but just trying to be transparent with information. And as time go along and we organize this, the other final set of files, uh, we just keep uh, updating the, the details. Uh, but yes, one of the things is uh, it is a lot of information to read, but the reading of the information from the introduction all the way down, it just open you up to what we are sharing, uh, which is a project from the foundation of 15 acres um, and uh, 60 acres. And then you know, we can do other things in other, part, other parts of the town because it's a town where uh, the land is available. All we just need to do is this from us and other people you know, you know, figure out how to get uh, you know, development in. Uh, there's there's an industrial area where it would be perfect for, you know, for those of us who have connections with people who are looking to expand the operation from America to Africa or just international and they're looking to build you know, whatever it's um, you know, whatever kind of uh, manufacturing setup. And, you know, it's one of those things where there's no limitation or investors who are into beach resort or beachfront property. Uh, so that's the good thing about having this uh, untapped town. Now, even scrolling down from the um, membership applications, pitches, videos, uh, these are just links that take you right there. The pitches and the videos uh, reroute you uh, to, to our Facebook and uh, YouTube. And I'll, just, I'll show the uh, long playlist that we have on YouTube that's documenting just our journey on the land from, from this, uh, knowing about it from September 2019 to now. And people may judge based, judge and say, this should be more progress or, or you know whatever way people look at it. But when we look at people who have done these projects and acquire land, let's see, you know, when we look at our research, if they're still standing the test of time, if they're still going. It's uh, something unbelievably difficult to pull off, but based on our experience and our network uh, there in Ghana, we've been able to make, uh, you know, make certain moves. So uh, the final part literally is closing out things uh, with survey and lands commission, but at the same time to getting, uh, tapping into uh, you know, our resources here in America and that's what I really want to talk more about uh, once we open things up, because that's the uh, the next level of what uh, needs to be done. All of the hardcore things that need to be taken care of on the land is um, it has been handled, and you know we can uh, we can see where you know when we go to the town when we you know, when our members are showing up. It's there's a more familiar scene. So from just going there after time after time with groups and. Uh, building the public relations. Uh, it's, uh, you know, for those who haven't visited, um, you know, once you get there and if you ever want to stay overnight or so on, the office is right there. So you can, you, know, you can camp out there if you need to. But, um, you know, it's a nice piece of, uh, you know, of quietness. And I know sometimes it's hard to just look at bare land and say, and then visualize these things. So that's why on the site maps, land survey, GPS coordination, we have realistic link, including uh, Google Earth, where you can just see the 15 and 60 acres in the office. And you, you know you can just map out with your vision and just look at the whole town and see this, all you see is this greenery. And since uh, we have acquired uh, the 15 and 60 acres, you have had more groups and more individuals that are acquiring land, even the, the community that we have our office in. Uh, we, you know, we came before that uh, set up and you know, one of the things is, you know, when people see us start showing up, other people start coming to develop. So they, they realize that, you know, people are going to need housing right there. So that was a great investment. And we jumped on it and got the first lot so we can run operations there and also just have a more underground presence.
And the main part of uh, here is uh, the committees and the bylaws. Those are this uh, quick read over. The bylaws is very detailed. Yeah. And uh, getting started, uh, land costs, requirements, refund policy, uh, all that information. So these are just details that uh, we just put them right in. So anyone that's interested could, be, could just uh, take a look at it and be clear on it. Uh, we've had plenty of presentations in the past where we have gone over all of these uh, documents and uh, details. The next thing I'm going to switch over to is uh, the newsletter. So this is the newsletter that we just update um, every month. Um, once you have read it, uh, not much has been updated, but usually once we come back from tour, I just usually put a few new pictures on there. So I try to get right to the point, uh, just have the dates up there in the conference call is and have the link and information so you can get right to the point. And then in the newsletter uh, that I share uh, with our general email list, and I ask for people to share to those who are interested. Uh, we just put as uh, much documentation as possible in there. So anyone that uh, sees, it, sees this information could be clear that you know we're serious about our business and everything. And we have a documentation organized. Uh, so one of the things I always want people uh, to think about is think about all the things that we have organized and we have put in place and we have set up. Uh, not necessarily that, hey, why don't you guys have 50 houses built and things like that. Uh, so these are the things that I look at us, our, our accomplishment from this uh, building an enterprise from, you know, from America to, um, you know, from just having meetings here and other uh, office locations from me and my associates to this us finally getting to the point uh, in the last few years where we say, hey, you know, we can just go and work out our own land acquisition deal, get our lawyers together, get our consultants, um, um, we know, work with a chief in that town and this. You know, kind of built from there on up. So this is one of our last uh, photos um, there in uh, Ghana. Um, so Azibo, oh, oh, great job with that logo. Uh, it, it, it has become an attraction to where whenever we all go and we see this big uh, Black Star um, logo, uh, all of us want to take pictures around it. And then in front of the house, now this is unbelievable. Um, and Azibo, hopefully you can unmute yourself for us. You know, while we and you and I can talk about this now, Zebo, you see this white mark here, right? Uh, is yeah. it still is it still there, right? Because I wasn't paying attention; I was so like caught up into other things, trying to get these recordings. I tried to get it, get it painted. I even bought the paint to paint it, but they don't they don't want anybody to do anything on the outside. If we're ready, if we're ready, if we owned it, then we could do what we wanted to do. It is, and then family, for, for those who are left listening, I'm just one to let you know, family, these are the difficulties and the level of stupidity that we have to deal with at times. And people ask me how do I do not to go crazy, but you know, you have to just calm yourself and kind of just work with things. But that makes no sense. It's like whoever messed that up in the first place, you know, we had some, and I'm going to refrain from calling people names because I want people to think that's what we do, just belittle people. But some person that was working there literally just obviously this whatever they did with their uh, paintbrush didn't make any sense. So now I understand the, the, what he did was not was not right. It made no sense. But at the same time, too, that you know we have a you know we have a you know we're, we're, we're renting there. The least they can do is you know let us paint over it or paint over it and not like get into this debate about changing because we're not altering and changing anything. You know. So I'm telling you people uh, and family and anyone else that's listening out there, uh, when you're ready to make a move to Africa, that's why I tell people, reach out to us for con consultation and reach out to us to connect with you, the people who can uh, help you move around because it will just drive you crazy and to where you just, you know, you just be ready to go back to the airline airport and get on a flight back to America. Uh, but at the same time too, some of us do have to just be pioneers and stand and deal with things. But Aziba, we just literally have to come up with a better ways to get things done because it's like, you know, it's like, we're, you know, we're paying customers and we you know we're, we're a big supporter of what they're doing because, you know, we're, we're always trying to get members to move here. Um, and, you know, it's something that he has to, they're going to have to fix. I mean, and that's why I just really want to get our whole, our whole uh, community built so we don't have to be at the mercy to the foolishness because it's make no sense. Um, they they don't have a sense of urgency, man. They they don't have a revolutionary mindset. 
You know, I have a sense well, of I mean, do, do, you, do you really have to even have a revolutionary yeah. mindset? This is just basic business and customer service and making sure that and property management and right. maintenance, which, which I guess obviously maintenance is not in the, the vocabulary because uh, it seems like things aren't maintained. It just builds up and then it just goes to so on. So that's, that's why we have to build up our own community and be a shining example. You know, because one of the big part of what we have, even on the 60 acres is you know, the maintenance building, the idea and the mindset to this, you know, you're, you're, you're doing routine maintenance. So you're not waiting till your car catch on fire before you decide you want to do an oil change. Uh, so I'm not trying to just be disrespectful and not, you know, the way people do certain things. I'm just saying that in order for us to progress and, and do certain things, like when I have people come in there, it, you know, I have a whole group of people here and like no one knows who any of these people are and who they know. So that's why I'm always just at people mercy like this. Everyone just do their part, you know what I mean? We're making sure that everyone we're doing business with uh, get paid and we're making sure everything is covered and making sure everybody's happy with people have to take a sense of pride into the business that we're building. That way we can, you know, cause it's something that create opportunities for all of us. You now, whether it's the guys that can be working the bulldozers or the people that's clearing the land or people that's building the house or the people that's doing, you know, whatever the situation is, you know, and just, just, and, you know, I appreciate you being there as Evo, cause I know you've been doing like a whole lot of public relations and getting people to understand right. that we come from somewhere else. We're not looking down to what our people there in Ghana is doing, but we're saying, hey, we do have to up the level of standards because when we're bringing people to the town, to the area, you know, we don't want people to say, you know, man, this place is just like, nothing going on you know and you know we want people to see that we can actually build something together in that and right. so it takes a pride in the people that are actually there that's why even when i'm saying when people are clearing the land i understand right. that you want to make quick money and clear the land but take some pride right. into making sure it looks good that way we're presenting the land to you know to you know whether it's investors or members or just people who are going to be passing by in the future and they just want to see what we're doing and what we're up to uh so you know, as you keep on trying to do what you're doing. I know you're limited on what you can do, and there's only so much you can say and tell and explain. Uh, but uh, I'm just looking at the wall, and I realized last time that the wall wasn't painted. Um, and I specifically communicated with uh, the manager there that we need it painted. Huh? I tried. I even bought the paint. I even had to paint. <laughs> Everything, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I shouldn't be laughing because it's not funny. It's actually sad. But you know, it's like they use on the walls outside, and they don't want nobody to mess with it until they until they get the right paint. You know. So how long are they gonna run that excuse? I, I don't know, man. You know, it's, it's like uh, this is this this is supposed to be a government facility. You know, I, I mean, and it, you know. It, it, it takes the people to get things done here. Government ain't gonna get nothing done. You, you gotta, you gotta have the, the the blessings of the people to get things done. And the people has to be they have to be unified. They have to have a, some type of understanding, a relationship with each other, in order to move forward to get things done in a unified manner. You know. I got I got six percent charge on my phone, so I'm gonna talk, <laughs> talk, talk as much as I can. You know, until my phone goes out. Absolutely, brother. And now uh, while we're here on this um on uh, the 2022 uh, group pictures um that we took on the last journey to Ghana last year, uh, let me know if you want to share anything with um any of your projects or any just updates directly uh, before your phone uh, goes out. Um, right, right now, these people here, the people here, the black folks here in Ghana, in Jahazi, they, uh, they are a show me people. Show me what you're doing. Don't just, uh, don't just uh, run your mouth because that's what everybody's doing. Everybody in Ghana, all they do is run their mouth. We have to show these people what we're doing. You have to have physical proof to what we're doing. Just talking is not going to get it, not going to do it. And that's, that's what I've been doing. I've been showing people. I've been doing things, and I've been showing people what we're doing, you know. Uh, 
They don't know what Pan Africanism is. They don't. They don't know what the Pan African, the uh, Black Black Star Pan African community is about. You know. So what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm explaining. I'm, I'm explaining it to them, and I'm starting the youth movement at the same time. I, I've already bought two uh, two units uh, for for my two businesses that I want to start. That's a restaurant and an ice cream parlor. The ice cream parlor, what we're going to actually do is we, it's a factory and we're going we're gonna to make money selling ice cream until we get enough money to build a larger company, a larger building. But we, we're starting out small and, and you know, all, all we need is consistency and cooperation. All we need is cooperation and unity so that we can get this done, you know. But I, I've even held off building my own house on my own plot over at Black Star just to do this, just to infiltrate into the community, integrate into the community, get to know the people, bring the community together, so that we can all do this together. You know, um, they, they have questions. They, they have a lot of questions about what we're about and what we're trying to do. They don't know what we're trying to do. They don't know who we are. You know, they look at us as outsiders, but we're not outsiders. We're African also. You know, when we need to teach that to them. They don't know who we are, you know. So my job is to teach them who we are and who they are. They don't even know who they are. You know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, a, it's, daunt, it's a daunting task to, to do what I'm doing, you know. It sounds like uh, you went out all right, uh, Zebo, it sounded like you went out there. But I appreciate your brother um, uh, sharing that and uh, sharing uh, you just, you, you're there. Um, and that's the key, uh, building relationships uh, there in the, the town and going through certain things and just uh, understanding the groundwork. So uh, Zebo is one of those persons that's been there from the beginning and also Leonard and Carmen been there living. So. We have some energy of people there, and the goal is to uh, do our best to get uh, more people set up and ready. But the key thing is I got to get uh, everybody surveys finalized. That is my main uh, mission. And I'm telling people, if it was up to me, it would be, it'd be done a long time ago. But unfortunately, I'm at the mercy to how some of the stuff uh, works. So we're working uh, on uh, tactics and different ways to just get things done more efficient. So. Hopefully I got, um, we'll have everybody surveys by the end of the month, the beginning of the month, or most of them. Uh, that way those things could be out the way so we can focus more on registration and things like that. So let me uh, continue through the uh, screen share and then I will um, stop and we just open things up and we can dialogue about anything. All right then, um, and Marina, once uh, I finish, uh, hopefully we can just hear uh, some good energy from you. All right, so the last thing we were talking about was uh, our Black Star Pan-African Community Office. Uh, and it's an office that uh, we need to work on uh, building out as an office, just like how air is, just not like how air is, because you don't need all those things there. You know, we want to keep it light there as possible so we can have space uh, to our uh, work. But uh, yes, that is the uh, another goal also to just make the uh, office more office-like and get one or two people near to do some more of the work there as far as uh, business work. So this is the uh, documentations, um, documents, videos, and pictures. Uh, those are the links right there on our, for our website. Then uh, Facebook and YouTube. All right, uh, greeting Steve. And so this is my famous layout right there, the Business and Technology Center. 
security posts, community center, and then 50 plots and it looks nice and laid out on Google Earth. And once, you know, we build all these homes and build it up, it'll just be a nice representation of a nice uh, 15 uh, acre community. And from there on, you know, we look to just get more into this business of um, community development. But this is our birth and foundation um, um, uh, project, I should say. Hmm. Let me mute you and call me and give me a few and I'll get you on. And um, all of our legal paperwork. Um, so we have group paperwork, um, group, group surveys from 15 to 60 acres, uh, both signed and stamped. And then also we have individual surveys and most people have gotten their surveys signed and stamped. And the new ones of us, um, that's what we're trying to work on. So you can have all those things taken care of. Now this is a general um, a topic list that uh, we, we go through. And most of the times uh, what I do is just go through as much of this as possible. But uh, a lot of times there's too much information to go over in one shot. So we just usually just do a brief uh, overview of it. Sometimes let's go to full overview. So all the calls are different um, as we focus on different things. But uh, this is just telling you that uh, phase, phase one and phase two uh, dimensions, um, the breakdown of the plots, uh, the different ideas of where we're looking to put certain things. And uh, phase three, you talk about that uh, vision of a beach town and an industrial park. So that's just, uh, all of these are just vision laid out. So once we put more work into it, we can maybe just get these things um, done. But that is, uh, that is our focus vision. It's building different uh, parts of that entire town. So that goes into our numbers as far as our costs, uh, membership dues. And everyone will get a 90 year, uh, 99 year lease. Um, and that's uh, something the chief signed off on already on the 50 and the 60 acres. Memorandum of understanding and, uh, and our legal uh, paperwork for the land. So land survey and registration is what I was uh, talking about. So uh, land clearing is another thing that we have to just consistently do. So every once in a while, what we just have to literally do, we just have to literally just make sure we have a few micromanagers on the property and have and work with the bulldozers to clear the land to where it's leveled, it looks smooth and nice. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I just honestly just wish I could be there to manage certain things, but it is it's not realistic for myself. So as I always say it to Lazibo, appreciate him being around and just doing his best to just work on these things. But uh, that's another thing that we just literally have to do whenever we have work being done on the property, we just literally just have to have people overseeing what's getting done, the way things are being done correctly and it's look nice and clean and smooth. Right, so, and everyone that's in our group, uh, we have the private uh, WhatsApp um, group. And then, you know, we also set up the Facebook group, private and public. Uh, but uh, the WhatsApp group is the main group that we have where we just update uh, information and then we just have a private communication with our group members. So. Any group members that are not on there and they need to get on there, all you have to do is communicate with me. And our goal is just to post as much updates as possible, pictures, videos, meetings, um, any kind of discussions about where we go from here, what we need to be working on, or if anyone wants to volunteer to work on this project, things like that, like this serious, hardcore information. Uh, so it's uh, not for just everyone to post uh, their favorite videos on uh, Facebook on the page. Uh, it's just for work purpose. And then earlier, Azibo was talking about uh, infrastructure. I don't know if he's up, but uh, one of the main thing is um, this um, using our next collection of this money we put together and this, uh, this bulldozing the current road and working it out to where we can just get uh, people who are looking to get their uh, work vehicles up and get their supplies up so they can just get to the land. Because once you're on the land, it's um, you know it's good. Um, you know, we do still need to work on those dirt roads there, but uh, we literally carve dirt roads on the land by just using a bulldozer and then marking the land and the layout. 
Uh, so even when we go back to show you some of the first videos, that's the way the land was laid out was this beautiful. All the pillars are brand new. So right now I look into this replaced broken pillars. The pillars are broken from people weeding and maintaining the land and just being reckless and just and trying to just get a job done quick so they can get paid and things like that. So uh, all that stuff is just going to be at a stop. Um, anyone that's doing anything for us, you know, you know, this needs to just be more professional organized. So trying to get um, everything that's uh, organized as best as possible. And that's just trying to our best to work with the culture of the people that we're working with in the country. Because my mindset of how I do things is just completely different. It is uh, more like, it's not the thought, let's get this done and so on. But this may not work everywhere. Uh, but we do have to figure that out because we can't let these things uh, stall and hold us back. And here we come to the 60 acres where that's the next thing we need to just start doing our bulldozing and then do better presentation of the land so we can get people who want to actually be on the land to use up some of the lots to build any of their um, industrial projects or, you know, or if they need to build, use some of the land for apartments and things like that. So that's what this uh, rough draft looked like. And it's still in rough draft mode because we still need to change a few things on there. So it would make sense to create a digital version of this and we have to redo it. So that is still uh, the vision uh, to make it uh, residential and commercial and build it, you know, build it out. Um, so these are the things that you know, we're open to any ideas, any thing anybody want to process. Because again, these are just presentations we put together uh, based on the land and as time go along, whoever we're working with, you know, we put everything together and you know, work it as a group. So we're just always depending on a group energy. I saw Chief Nana Haiti and his letter about reference of our land and clarity about land details. And then some of these are some older videos. This is the road that we're talking about, Road to Black Star. Uh, in this video, let me let me actually just uh, play this, um, see how this works out. Yes, family, we're in the town of Jahan, and we're about to get on our bus. We did a quick stop, some members, group members, and community members, teenagers, and we. And uh, most important, and I This program is the main entrance. Yes, really trust. All right, see, so this is a famous dirt road to get us to the uh, property. So earlier, Zebo was talking about drainage and he was talking about um, uh, bulldozing it. Uh, so it's not a long road. That's the good thing about it. Uh, so let me just show some more of the road and then we'll just continue. <laughs> I have a question, Bomani. This is the Black South Pan African community land. We are pulling up 15 acres, and our land is marked off and all set up with numbers and things like that. So, the those on the community land right now. Um. All right, I'm um, not sure what happened with everyone's screen. Uh, so that is the uh, the road. And let me get us back to
That's a family that is that road right there. Um, what I'm looking for is Brother Kwame Asante. What's going on? All right, you know, uh, let me just open things up for, for a minute or two. All right, uh, can everyone hear me? And um, I guess everybody have their camera off. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. All right, uh, so just um, I had one person on here. I was gonna have him come in so he can explain certain things about the road. And let me see if I can get him real quick to come back on. I have a quick question before. Oh, uh, sure. Um, go ahead. The 60 acre where you had all the business plots, is that set in stone? Uh, no, none, none of those are set in stone. Uh, it's just a um, presentation of uh, what we can uh, work with. If we find a better way out to make it work, um, we can adjust uh, those layouts. We definitely want to have uh, some additional uh, units uh, as far as residential. Okay, because... Um... Uh, go ahead. Uh, what I was thinking was, it seems as though we need a continuous line of revenue to get this done at a, the pace. All right, I repeat that about the re revenue. The in, in order to, because how much uh, the road, you said, how, the, the, uh, no one has an exact cost on how much it costs to get the road. We don't have a cost on how much the lights and the drainage system, which means this is going to be a continuous flow of revenue that's uh, needed yes. to continue to build. So the question is, is should there be a way that we can put our funds together to create a, a, a way to create a continuous line of revenue? Uh, yes, uh, one of the things I brought up um, throughout the time frame is uh, us to agree on a development budget. Uh, and I was telling people that uh, we can use some of the membership dues to put towards some of these things, but um, you know, we're, we're limited there. Uh, so, so it's a serious conversation I've been trying to have, um, but uh, it's, it has not been that uh, simple. Do you have a construction manager, Bomani? No, there's no uh, construction manager uh, there. Uh, what we have is uh, we have a few different uh, group of builders, and uh, those builders have their main supervisor who, you know, who handle things there, and then Azibo just kind of oversees things there. But uh, there's no one because the people that are building there are just individuals building their home. Like we don't have anyone to start building our community and business center and things like that, and then and so that's where we definitely need someone to kind of manage and supervise certain things. Okay, okay another question. Well, I'll wait, because I got a, a list of questions. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, shoot. Sure. Okay. All right, so, um, so is this land located near a high velocity hurricane zone? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, all right. Um, so for infrastructure, so the tie-in, what I know you have 60 acres, but how far outside of that six, 60 acre perimeter is the tie-in for underground utilities and, and drainage plans, the drainage system? Are no, you tying is, into the draining, drainage system close by or are you gonna have your own separate? Uh, yes, uh, uh, great question. What we're, everything that we have to do, we have to build sustainable and we're, we're gonna have to build it out ourselves because uh, you're looking at a town where there's no infrastructure in the town. Um, there's the current infrastructure that you see um, is, is in the community that uh, we have our office. Uh, now, if you're talking about tying it into that, now those are options because I did speak to um, the, the folks there, but they're not really serious on many things. But I told them that we like, you know, we like what they have set up. You know, they've set up some you know, decent drainage and they have set up a uh, nice underground power system. So th those would be the people that uh, would work with. The situation where we have to figure out is how we can get um, different aspects of funding. To, and that's funding. like just getting like right to the point with, with, with 
everyone. We have had, um, you know, we have had quotes for lights and many things. And you know, by the time you add it up, you know, it does add up. So um, I don't really know how to work these aspects of things for America, but what I do have here is my nonprofit I'm building up. And then also, um, you know, building up my information for government contracts. And I'm also just finding out who, are, who is open to these things and working these things out or working with their chamber of commerce. Because uh, it's only, as you can see, it's only a few of us on a call and we're just limited on all the things that need to be done. And I myself, I try not to pressure people. So I'm just looking for external help as best as possible. But that's honestly what we need to get all of this stuff done. Uh, we can easily get people to come back and give more quotes. And I got a bunch of professional companies that does many different things. But when we come down to it, is that we're going to have the funding to take care of all of the financials. And the answer is no, because um, we have not agreed to what we're going to commit to. And it's not fair to five people to agree to put certain things up and then other people just, you know, kind of lay back. So... I'm still trying to figure out how to, to deal with that and how to deal with people because when you're dealing with people, it's very sensitive. You say, you have to just be careful what you even say to people because one simple thing you say to people, they, they're pissed, they're upset with you and the next thing they blame you for everything. I want my money back. I want to get out of this group. I don't want anything to do with anything. And um, so I'm just realizing, let me just see who wants to work on it and whoever doesn't. I'll find some people out here. I've been living in the state of Georgia for a while and uh, we have people here. We just... We, you know, we have just like literally gotten to this point where we have to figure out about the, um, I mean, we knew it was coming as far as infrastructure and things like that, but we had so many great ideas, especially with corporate economics. And um, I don't want to, you know, I want to stay positive with it. I, I do feel people will be more energized, but like I was telling my survey and the people at the Lands Commission, I was like, people want documentation, they want these things, and they'll be a lot more motivated the more is done and the more they have. Uh, so that's what me and Aziba have been trying to get people to understand, to do more of their part. Uh, uh, so um, unfortunately- well, You have my contact. You can contact me and we can have a private conversation about funding. All right, let me see if, um, I see a name on you. I'm trying to remember us talking sometimes you talk we to some people back and forth before you went to tanzania i believe or maybe it was ghana Man, I, I get caught up into this uh i'm just uh pulling up your information so i could just link you travel like instruction at gmail.com oh yes i do remember i was communicating before um yeah uh, before and doing tanzania so that's all uh, perfect. Um, that's um, perfect, and uh, we can <laughs> we can talk and work things. Yeah, out. I think we need a, I think we're gonna actually need to have a conversation about funding. Oh, a serious yes, uh, and, because and if we can start some now, would be good because we have to all get our mind into it. So even if you want to kick it off, Harry, and if you want to hold Kwame for a little bit, and uh, tell I mean, even if because we have everything recorded, so we can explain and point to our group members about some of these things also, because some people are gonna listen to the recording. Okay. Um. Well, uh, as far as funding, it, I would believe yes that if even if I had say twenty thousand dollars right now, and I came over there, I put that twenty thousand dollars in the land, and yes, we build the road. We build uh, lights and everything, but then that money stops. If we could find a way, where to we create, get twenty, thirty thousand dollars and create a business that can continuous revenue to put stuff on the land to continuously grow it out, and if we could do that together with some donations from uh, from a lot of black owned uh, tech companies that are. I'm connected to or even GoFundMe's or people follow that, you know, donations through followers. But there are ways to be to build revenue to where as though we could create more revenue from revenue. So instead of just taking money and just throwing money directly into the land, using money to create money. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, yes, absolutely. 
So what I was thinking is once I uh, hit the ground on Juneteenth, was to actually finding someone to actually build out some some type of plan or some type of architecture on some way of making them revenue and ideas i'm looking for ideas on it because I, I mean i have something to have some change to invest but i don't want to invest it and lose it absolutely and that's why we have to look at um this um public corporate funding um grants um and those aspects of things, uh, that way it's not a strain on individuals. Okay, and um, if there are anyone in the group that actually would actually like to sit down and talk about how we could build an actual full business that actually can have or organization that could continuously bring revenue and actually build up the entire area and just, not just, the community, not just the uh, Pan African community, but the entire area, so the whole area could become a revenue stream. Then I would like to have that conversation. Uh yes, uh, and that's and that's where we need to head to. Uh, but uh, I guess it would be just uh, me, you and Zebo, and unless um, someone else uh, reach out to us and let us know they would like to join. But yeah, yeah. we'd have to create those uh, conversations, and um, and that's what I mean. Uh, trying to just get anyone that's interested in doing certain things just to reach out separate and and you know then we just work on these things as the people that you know can you know can work on it and get it done uh, that way you know we just we're consistently working on something yeah, um, and just want to encourage others to just you know try to participate and give some level of energy i know some people are limited in certain things but we do need a more of a group energy to that way things seems like it's moving and progressing. Yeah, I have an idea for a theme park. And not well, not let me say not a theme park because um it, it's not one with rides, but one that wears though is a park where though people could come in and it could be family oriented. And it can have the two things that we've noticed that Ghana is missing. Focus towards family, family fun for children and customer service. Now, when we were coming in to Jihazi, uh, when we were there, there were things we were noticing. Like for instance, there's a dock coming in that looks shambled, but if money was invested in that dock, it, how much would fishing trips or how much would a, a, a tour around the riverbed, how much do people pay for that? Or how much, you know, do people pay just for a petting zoo? These are low hanging fruits that we could put together in a community based type business. Uh, do you have any proposals put together? No, uh, no I have overview. A, I have can a, share I, with the general um, members. Okay, I have an idea. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you my slide. Yeah, let me. Uh, yes, if you want to do screen sharing, the system is set for you to do screen sharing. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can see the screen. All right. Well, for everybody that doesn't, Microsoft Strategies and Solutions Development. Uh, and my wife is also on the line. Uh, her name is Nakia Carter. And who you want to speak? 
Yeah, hi everyone. I'm sorry I'm sick. That's why I'm not doing a whole lot of talking right now. But um, I work at Microsoft at the currently. Um, I've been in IT since 2001. I'm also certified like my husband. And um, uh, well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, we've had our own business at one point in time. We've had it for seven years. We sold it and then we moved to uh, Washington State. Um, and now we'll be moving to Ghana. And we are hitting the ground on the 19th of June. Uh, well, in this presentation, we want to give a vision to begin pointing out an organization, one that can build continuous revenue, uh, build a community, and lift the area. As I was saying earlier, that when we were there, even we had meetings with a lot of expats that had moved there and started businesses. We had a meeting with some people that we knew that lived there with families. And the main thing that they expressed frustration was they had nowhere for family fun. They, we had a lot of things where you can learn a lot. You can go to Cape Coast, you can go to all these structures and learn, but there was no family fun. You can go to the beach, yeah, and then you can go clubbing, but there was nothing really for children and family entertainment. And everywhere we also went, it was bad customer service. It was overwhelming. No matter where you went, everybody's on you wanting a dollar. And that was made me push my money further down in my pocket. Because I had so many people that come over here, buy this, come get this, I got this. Before I even got in the street, I had 15 people on me wanting me to buy something. So that's another thing we know is the bad customer service. We wanted to build a business that's based with customer service at its center. What we're thinking about was actually building a, uh, a roller skate rink. And not just any roller skate rink, a roller skate rink that also have a connection of a GameStop. If anybody have ever been inside a Microsoft store, that's how we're talking about setting it up. Also have a laser tag also in the same area. All of it is in a so same. You have to pay to get in and all these amenities are within this area. Have a bar for adults with dance floors, refreshment and things where it's the, uh, my brother was talking about his ice cream and all that stuff like that area where it's the, you can sell his ice cream and whatever. Have local vendors. That way we connect it to the local the, the community and have them involved. Also, we have not decided exactly because we don't know the price, but we were looking at either a bumper car or a box car ring outside. These are things that a lot of that, for kids, for families, for children to do. And also our outdoor theater is besides what, two months out of the year is warm, 85 degrees, most days, breeze at night, outside the theater would be great, especially since we found that the Universal Studios is now building their own studio there, which means it would be a lot of new films, a lot of new actors that people will want to see. Low hanging fruit, petting zoo. When we were there, we was walking down the street and we saw this gigantic bull whose horns was maybe expanding like six foot across. Now, I've seen back here in the States where people pay $20, $30 just to go in and pet sheep. So setting up a petting zoo should be low-hanging fruit. Horseback riding. When we was there, we, we met our people on the beach that were renting horseback riding. For 50 Ghana CDs, they give you a horseback ride and back and forth. Also, walking trails all within an area that's gated off, that brings people in. You pay to get in, all these anonymities are there. Now, potential layout, this is up for debate, but it's pretty much what I'm saying. You come into the gate, this area will be free. Well, not free, but you pay, once you get the gate, they'll allow you access to, to your uh, skating ring, 
the laser tags, which I'll get to a little later on, and the game store, the game shop, I mean, the petting zoo. The horseback riding probably will be extra. The movie theater will be extra. And the go-kart will be extra. But you have your restaurants and your refreshments. Now, if anybody ever been to a county fair in the States or AFRAM or to Artscape inside the States, then you actually know, you have an idea what I'm talking about. You pay to get in. But once you get in, you pay for everything. You pay to get on the rides, you pay for the drinks, you pay for everything. We're not offering to pay for everything. That automatically gets you into the ring, into the uh, laser tag and everything else. Now, location. Location is something that we will want input from others on what the location, where the best location to put it, best way to set it up, and how it will look, and the best ambiance we can give for people to come in, and the potential costs. Now, the cost is going to be hard to, to do now because first thing we got to do is find builders that doesn't see us and see dollar signs the second they see us. We don't want people that inflate their prices four or five times the cost because when we were there, we found that that happens. We found that somebody that was charging us three, four thousand dollars a day for certain one service, once we talked to a Ghanaian friend, I mean, a Ghanaian CDs per day, once we talked to a Ghanaian friend, that price dropped down to five hundred dollars. I mean, 500 kind of CDs instead of that 3,000. So we need to find people that doesn't see a price tag on our forehead. We can also get funding through personal personal funds, donation, GoFundMe's, using our own personal resources, people we know, companies we're associated with, and, and keep receipts on everything, because that's the only way we're going to be able to keep dimes on every penny that they drop. Now, the skating ring. I'm not sure about the cost, but I mean, I would think $30,000 would be the, of US would be to pay for that. And I'm pretty sure that we could raise that type of money. And the potential estimated cost, we have to shop locally in Ghana because these are the prices of like skates and everything on eBay. So I, I know for a fact we probably could find a better price in Ghana if we shop locally, especially on, on things like TVs and stuff like that. But as far as game consoles, game consoles, it doesn't have to be up-to-date game consoles. How many thrift stores have we walked into and their game consoles around $25 a piece? Or we can go buy games, old games, 200 games for $200. Now, the laser tag, I don't like the gun part of the laser tag. So, what we found was that there are games where so you can have tags on you. Whereas, so though, say, if you got 10 people on one side, 10 people on the other side, one wearing red, one wearing blue, the red sign go over, the red team chases the blue team, tag them, their lights change over. And then once it changed back, then the blue team go after the red team. And then after maybe three or four tries, at the end, whoever has the most colors win. And then we would need to advertise it through social media, billboards, even TV ads there. So after that, like I heard before, you know, in the speech that was just sent to me, nothing leads to success like success. And that will lead to phase two. Phase two will be go out into the community and collaborate with the community. Once we collaborate with the community, then there's things that we can do through work parties, church groups. One thing that we noticed that when we were there on Sundays, the entire street disappeared during church hours. No one is out there. Everyone is in church. It's a very religious place. So everybody is in church, which means we can speak to pastors, we can speak to community groups, have work parties, things that we can do to build funds and do things. Then after that, if anybody have ever been into Baltimore, Maryland, then there's a place called Lexington Market. 
if you look at the pictures I have of Lexington Market, there's a symbolization of what Ghana actually looks like on the street and stuff is more organized. And it will allow to have a marketplace where people can come in into an organized area, spend money, have that money. I mean, spend money, and we would have town folks actually be the ones that be the vendors in it, and the vendors could pay for space while we do the advertising. Like I said, as we came in, we seen a, a dock where we had fishing. It's how much do people pay, pay for the uh, fishing expedition? If we put in a little bit of money just to build it up, make it look nice, and, and advertise it, then we could turn that into an area of revenue. Boat rides. How many times have we been to Florida? And we paid forty, fifty, sixty dollars just for a boat ride to go around and see a couple of alligators and a few birds flowers. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to offer there. Now seeing it is believing it. So once we start building it and we show that what we have, that will also bring in more investment, more people, because a lot of people, especially in the US, they work hard for their money. And they're used to people taking advantage of them. Everyone takes advantage of, of black Americans in the US. Everyone. Everyone sees us as a, as a means of making revenue. So we guard our money a lot harder than most because it takes us a lot harder to get it. So in order to get more people to come in, we have to show them that what is possible can be possible. It's just like if you look at Seattle or uh, Redmond in Washington State, that was a, a, a ghost town. But then Microsoft came in, they put that uh, a business center, and they built an entire city around that business community. Disney World in Florida. The whole town around Disney is owned by Disney. That brought in the revenue and brought in people. And the more people that invest, the more we can build and bigger we can grow. And I look forward to any thoughts, any ideas. Let me see if we can stop the ass. I'm trying to get everybody back on the screen. Yes. I'm used to teams and not Zoom. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, let me get this out of the way. Here we go. Hey, you got the call. All right, I appreciate uh, Harry. Uh, Harry uh, anyone have any? Um, Feedback or questions uh, for Harry? Yeah, remember, you have to unmute yourself. All right, uh, when you're ready, you can uh, unmute yourself. Uh, Harry, um, perfect um, presentation. And um, the things you mentioned, um, that's why we have a, uh, let me get myself back on here. The things you mentioned, um, that's why we have a empty town where we can uh, build from the ground up. Uh, Cause all of the things that um, the, the, from the social to the business aspect are things that we use and we want. Uh, it's ideal for us to just build it and just be in a town where we enjoy it and we can connect other people to that life. So some of the things uh, you mentioned, um, Uh, and I guess uh, we're probably going to have to just get a few of us to just talk um, mainly so offline and uh, work on some of these things. But uh, yes, I agree with you. We do need to figure some way how to just build something and it becomes you know, a generator of um, the, the, the cash flow to build other development. Um, and But that's always a tricky thing. Uh, what do you build and how do you make it work uh, fast and efficient? Uh, peace, family. Peace, peace. Um, just want to introduce myself. I, to be honest, I have not 
had the opportunity to sit here through the majority of the meeting, but I have been able to catch some of it. Uh, my name is Andre Hill, and this is my partner, Kalia Baker. Uh, we have family. A, peace, peace, peace. peace. Uh, we have a real estate development company. Um, let me give a small spill about that before I start to ask questions about right. the infrastructural capability, All right? So what we do is we can build self-sustainable and affordable housing. That's what we can do. The uh, name of our organization is Copper International Development Group, LLC. Copper International Development Group, LLC. Um, we, we, we're based in America, but we can build abroad, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. And essentially what, what our main catch is, I'm, I'm a straight shooter with this. Our main niche is that we can build practically anything, anywhere from anything from a doghouse to a church uh, and, and under, well under the conventional building cost. Let's take for instance here in the States, uh, we're actually in West Palm Beach, Florida right now. We have a, uh, a client who wants us to build three houses for her, right? She has three existing structures that we're gonna demolish and we're gonna build her three brand spanking new uh, modern, modern style homes. And what we've been able to do, well, this is how we got her in. Um, we can essentially knock off $150,000 worth of labor and material costs to build homes. So when we say we can do affordable housing, we mean in the sense of actually saving you money, not just uh, uh, the type of affordable, <laughs> the type of affordable housing that a lot of development companies that have access to CRA funds, TIF funds, and certain municipalities, they'll say they can do you affordable housing, but is is not too much under market rate, uh, which is which is becoming higher and higher, in most let's say mid sized cities. But that's just, that's just some capability of what we can do as an organization. But here's a question I have for the entire group. Um, and, and again, I haven't been able to sit, on the, sit in on the entire meeting. So I, ask, I may ask some redundant questions. So in other words, we're looking to build in Ghana, correct? Uh, yes, sir. This is in Ghana. Okay. That's correct. Uh, okay. My main question when it comes to repatriation especially for, uh, let's say, African-Americans wanting to live in any country in Africa that is offering some form of rep repatriation, or dual citizenship, or business collaboration. As a group of African-Americans, regardless of which country it is, whether it be Liberia, Ghana, Nigeria, what is your, what is your mindset on living in a self-sustainable microcosm. Let me explain what that is. When even in America, we tend to think that we have actually have the option to live in any neighborhood that we want to and be able to participate politically and economically on a par basis. And we know, we can see that, and I'll say this across our country in America, that that doesn't work anymore. We can't live separately. So in other words, as African-Americans, if we're going to move or repatriate to a country, we have to understand that the country wants us to come over there and build for the country. If you want to go over there as an individual, that's fine. I'm not knocking that. I'm not knocking that. But most of the time, a country like Ghana, Liberia, they're asking for four main points, especially Liberia. I just talked to... Uh, some, some people in Liberia, um, and if anybody knows the current status of Liberia, just got out of some long civil wars and they want to rebuild, all right? And they told us that they need four things. They need agriculture, they need business development, they need construction development and education. That's where they are in their infrastructure right now. So, I think as African-Americans, if we're gonna to go to an African country and build, um, 
we want to focus on those things. And this is how we can do it naturally as a self-sustainable microcosm, especially if we're looking at uh, uh, repatriating to a particular area together. When you, when you, when you, when you repatriate as a group, you already have your, your network of labor right there. You already have your network of labor. A lot of people tend to think, let's say when we talk about agriculture, that they're going to have to get out there and get their hands in the dirt and get dirty every day and sweat and essentially work hard. But that's not the case. Today we have, let's say, even eco-friendly technology to where the agriculture can essentially run itself with very low maintenance requirements. So not only can you feed yourself, not only can you feed your community, but you can also provide a basic resource to the population of Ghana because that's what Ghana wants. Right. Let's say um, if, you, if you want to continue to be a, a producer, free energy, solar energy in a sense, if you have a community, you need to convert that community into its own electrical company, essentially. You can do that by creating a solar microgrid. Every single house in that community can have uh, at least, at least uh, one kilowatt worth of, worth of energy production. All right. here, here in the States, uh, most electrical companies have a, have a lock on that to where they control that. As far as I'm concerned, based on what I've been looking at, we have much, much more freedom on African soil when it comes to energy production. Um, and I don't have to, I don't think I have to really get into how much money that brings in, not only to ourselves individually, not even just to our community, but again, to the actual country of Ghana. Right? When it comes to water conservation, here in the states, again, lo most local municipalities have the monopoly on water production. Period. Right, and I understand also because uh, I'm, I'm an environmental sustainabilityist. Let's just say I'm an environmentalist. I have uh, I have some colleagues. They go over to Africa and they're consistently trying to solve water issues. I asked them. I said, "What about you? Ever thought about water desalination?" In other words, it's like you have a coast that you're on. You got a beach you can go to. You got plenty of water. You can convert salt water into clean water. You can do that. So no, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry, if you hear anything in the background, that's, 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 that's some of our other partners. But I'm, I'm saying all of that to say this, to ask a very simple question. How willing are us as African-Americans, I'm assuming uh, Brother Bomani, that, that shouldn't okay. No, it's, it's cool, but I'm, I'm not. I just want to yeah. make sure I'm, I'm, I'm addressing you correctly, fam. You're in Ghana now. I live here in uh, Georgia. I mean, um, oh, you live in Georgia. Okay, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, what is the mind state of everyone here when it comes to moving Ghana? In other words, do you want to live next door to one another? That's the purpose of the project. Uh, example the 15 acres, uh, have all of us, um, the, the main members of us, uh, on that 15 acres and the goal is for us to build out and build all together. And the goal is for everything to be sustainable because we don't have the traditional infrastructure. Like there's no light poles out there and there's no, all, you know, there's no water lines or anything on the properties this year building from, from the ground up. So we're, we're trying to figure out our innovations and also figuring out um, our funding options. So these are this open conversation that we're having and just talking and just being honest with people. And they're sending people know this is where we are. Just like a few years ago, we showed people a jungle full of land that we've been able to clear out, lay out, get a few homes up, you know, basic stuff. Uh, but uh, you know, that's who we are as a people. We just, we're transparent and we're letting people know that we're not uh, masterminds of this and we don't have it all figured out. And none of us are professionals at land development. Uh, just like the other things that we have been able to build and learn from, it's just a movement of grassroots and just reaching out to the rest of us and say, hey, uh, let's work together. Let's figure it out. Let's, um, you know, let's make our ancestors proud. 
So absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I, I will, I will, I will give this to everyone on the line now. Um, I have, a, I have a, a very large network of environmental engineers and construction experts. Um, we're willing to collaborate with anyone who sees this same vision that we see. And I, 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 I believe that's what I see here. Um, I was talking to Kalia. She said, well, let's just send Bomani a presentation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll just put my, put my work where my mouth is. We'll put together a presentation and um, we'll send it over to you, Bomani. And also you can distribute this presentation to anybody who's interested on the line family, anybody who wants it, you got it, okay? You got yeah, it. Definitely appreciate you calling and joining in. Um, and uh, you know, when I looked at Khalil, I was like, I was looking at the name and you know, th thank you for reminding me because you know, I try my best to like reach back out to everyone and you know, people who actually want to connect with us. So I actually just appreciate people showing interest and, and looking I at I knew us. you were traveling. I saw your travel dates on your website. So yeah. I knew you'd get back with me eventually. Uh, yes, uh, it's a yeah, busy back-to-back -back November, um, but I uh, was here for the next uh, two months trying to get things done. Um, my, my good, uh, one of our members, uh, Harry here, um, I'm sure Harry got uh, something to share because he has the same mindset as far as it's an uh, innovative person that uh, joined us and, uh, you know, want us to just figure it out. But um, I'm trying to always find out where we just kind of go from here or the next steps. So, but um, Harry, it's like you have something to share. Yeah, from what he was saying, Everything he said is needed in order to bring sustainable power just to that area. The solar field will be needed in order to now we could do the bolt holes for water, but for let's say um, a bender structure, mm -hmm. we need to be able to do made to pull in massive amount of water. Absolutely. So the way the land is, is raw. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by raw is raw. When we went there, <laughs> it, it, I mean, when you drive into town, the roads uh, maybe, you know, you got to, it's only a half a car can get down at one time, you know. When I say it's raw, it is raw. So any, what, what you put in it is what you gonna get out of it. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, and as far as what you were saying about living next to a guy, being next to a Ghanaian and communing with the Ghanaians. When I was there, we asked, we didn't stay in the middle of a crawl where all the, tourists and you know wh where they show you the glamour we didn't stay there we went and got an airbnb and we end up staying with the people gotcha. now we were able to go out 12 1 o'clock at night walking them down the street with kids out there playing with surrey we went up down the street it was a, a funeral one friday night where the where they they were celebrating a person that died at like 98, 99. So if you live a long life, they celebrate that there. Mm -hmm. So if you ever been to a block party, imagine a block party maybe about two miles long. <laughs> so, I mean, it's the peace and the, the serenity is there. And the willing to want to learn and work for you is there. Gotcha. The, the good labor is there if you treat them right. Absolutely. For sure. So my whole goal when I get there, because like I said, I'm touching ground. I'm moving my whole family there from the 19th, June 19th of this year. And I wouldn't be going if I didn't have a means to take care of us while I was there. So <clears throat> because I'm already connected and working for black owned tech companies mm -hmm. and my wife is also part of the uh, Microsoft black tech connect uh, coalition. Excellent. We're going to invest as soon as we get there. 
we're going to start as soon as we get there. One side will be a tech side, and the other side is where we'll be working with Brother Bomani. Mm -hmm. And that will be on getting that area sustainable and growing it up. Because, like I said, just to get up to the plots of the land, the yeah. road needs to be fixed because <laughs> it was a it was a puddle three feet deep just to get past there to get around to the land. So really it, it's going to take some some work to get the land right. It's going to take continuous revenue. Huh. And I've seen a lot of I mean, it's a lot of different people out there that's trying to do this. And you can go on like YouTube and look at cities that, you know, stars, actors, Akon, all these people are trying to build. And even though we don't have that type of money, you know, there's still things that can be done to attract that type of money and to build that area up to where it's, though, it's comfortable for not only us, the Ghanaians there, and it would give us, it would give us our roots and it would give them their branches. Well. And those branches can reach back to the US and give connection for my family here to have a power base back in, in, in Africa that supports them here, like every other nationality on the planet. For sure. Uh, so that's where, that, that's, that's what it is. And that's what I'm trying. That's my goal. That's, that's so, excellent. So that's everything you saying is needed. And, and, that's, and, and that's, that's the that's same vision that we all have. That's feasible. Um, do we do we have any contacts with uh, I name government, like let's say the Department of Agriculture in particular? Not yet, no. But I'll be. That is one of the main things because we'll be going there looking to figure out how we can convert them out of paper. Understand. Everything they do is on paper. Everything. Gotcha. So we want to convert them. They're trying to convert to technology. And they're at the cusp ends of it. Because if you can imagine back in the early 90s where cell phones just was hitting the line, which was coming off the beepers. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's yeah. where they're at. Oh. In technology. Except for they got phones. <laughs> <laughs> they have phones, that's it. But the rest of the technology is not there. The whole infrastructure have to be built. They have seven Microsoft companies there, or Microsoft partners there. And I think uh, Google just laid off every technician in Ghana that they had over that. there. I saw that. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And I think Microsoft is also getting rid of some people as well. Mm. But the, the infrastructure, getting to the government is one of my main goals once I get there. Sure. And I have, I have people on the ground that are in technology, that are in, in spaces that I can reach the government. Right. So until I get there and work those angles, I give you a better answer once I get there and work those angles, but I have to work those angles first. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's, that's great. Because uh, I, I saw your presentation, brother. Excellent. Thanks. Excellent plan uh, and, and excellent elaboration on it, too. Um, and and what we're looking at, somebody looking at your presentation, just the average investor to say, right? We, we will classify it as private money as of right now, right? <laughs> um, but it has a lot of capacity for public money. Now, of course, I, I believe African countries do it a little bit different than America, of course, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's a lot less red tape. Right. right. I think I think, you know, the connection to different, lack of a better word, heads of state in Ghana, they again, you know, they do have a a, a a working a working government, a working jurisdiction. I love it. 
Um, and so they have, the, I think, believe they have the capacity to to fund as well, just so long as it enhances the Ghanaian economy. Right. 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 Um, I think as as African Americans, if when we're going over there, the main again, I, I I may repeat it, but the main thing they want to hear from us is. We're not just here to make money for us and go sit in our house. Yeah. We're here to, we're here to build Ghana. Right. Right. And so, you know, if, if we can, if we can gain those, forget me, you got to, got a motorcycle. Sorry about that, guys. Um, if we can, if we can get those contacts, um, uh, I'm going to dig through my roller decks. I had, I, I had a, 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 a group of, brothers and sisters who were doing a repatriation movement, I still have their contacts. They may be a lot further along than the last time I spoke with them. I'll reach out to them and see if they have those connections and I will just convey them to you. Okay, that sounds good. Because in the future, my goal is not to just stick with one thing. Because if we can and even the chief spoke to me when I was there, and he said to me, if we came there with agriculture, uh, some type of agriculture uh, idea to do rice or sugar canes or toothpicks or yeah. anything, he would give us the land for it. Gotcha. Mm. Yes. So yeah. when he said that, at first I was like, hold up, I don't know anything about agriculture you know i don't know but there are people that can be hired Absolutely. that can be financed that can do that that are there from ghana that live there and that will benefit them their family and the entire community so if we uh, my whole thought problem if we go there and try to do this alone as one just one pan-african community we're going to fail Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and then not only that, we'll be one small community within a midst of a whole country. Exactly. And then that, all it takes of us to do one thing wrong. Yeah. And then we got a whole country tearing it completely down. Yeah. So we have to integrate with the local community and become one with them. Absolutely. In order to get it done. Absolutely. So I'm with you on that. I'm with you, I'm with you, whatever, brother. I'm with you all. I'm with you all. Um, I have another presentation i gotta go in here and prepare okay uh, kalia said hey you uh come sit on in this meeting for a second i i'm grateful and honored to meet every single one of you all right all right appreciate uh, you brother uh good talking with you and i'll be connecting uh, back with both of you excellent all right excellent. that's good talking you nice meeting you too likewise family. peace and love uh, peace uh, to you all peace and blessings all right all right all right cool family uh there are a few people on. Just want to see if anybody want to share anything before we continue. Uh, Maureen, uh, Steve, and um, I don't know who iPhone is. Uh, greetings, Maureen. How are you? Hi, um, hi uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in England in the cold. <laughs> Yeah, it was freezing cold in the night time. It's 11 o'clock here. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the last presentation and also to you, Harry, as well, because um, sometimes I'm on the call, sometimes I'm not, depending on the time and if I'm around and stuff. But I've been around for a while and I've got two plots of land on the first plot, number 49 and 50, that I'm getting for my family. And... Um, just listening to how things have developed over the last couple of months, over the last couple of years, I'm really proud of you, Bamani, for getting it all sorted. And obviously, we've had lots of <laughs> ups and downs. Trials and tribulations. <laughs> but at the same time, the development of it, it, it sort of, it, it makes me feel a lot more positive about moving to Africa because in England, you tell people about it and it's like a, a dream. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, why are you going to Africa? Even though it's not far from England, it's like, why are you going to Africa? And, you know, what's all that about? But the fact that this organisation has developed so much and has given everyone the opportunity to build a house and to 
to have all the procedures done for them while they're in other countries, you know, it's really appreciated. And the last brother now, and also yourself, Harry, as, as I said, um, that has just been such a positive influence on me right now because sustainability, looking at how we're going to live with each other, how we're going to develop the community, it makes it feel more real, you know, and how we're actually going to, because we are going to be neighbours, whether we know each other or not. Somebody's going to build a house on number 48 plot, and somebody's going to build a house, is there a number 51? I don't think there is. But anyway, somebody's going to build a house on number 48, so that's going to be my neighbour. So we have to sort of know how we're going to live together and how we're going to complement each other. So, um, you know, it's really been brilliant watching the progress of it. And another thing is I was listening to, um, oh, okay, I forget his name, the one that's managing the... You're talking about Azebo? Yes, okay, yeah, I was listening to him. And um, one of the things that I picked up is that um, I think what we have to be careful of is is making sure that we work well with the community around us because their way of doing things is completely different to how we do how we know how to do things and we're learning from them and they're learning from us so i think sometimes patience i know there's not a time scale but sometimes patience is a must and you know working with the community and just sort of helping them to develop as as well as us learning things from them it's really important and we can't really to not really criticize but that's how they do things because my family's from the caribbean and as you know from the Car well people from the caribbean will know everything is like a step slower or in fact 10 steps slower so you have to sort of work with it when we're walking in the caribbean they're asking us why we're walking so fast but we're walking the speed that we're walking in England and we want everything to be done like spot on. But sometimes it's like the time scales and the culture makes it, makes it different for each of us. And I think we just, all of us just need to have that, that sense of patience and know that these things will come together. Because when I first started watching Bomani's videos, that was back in 2000 and wherever, but I noticed that everything was consistent. His visits were consistent. Every visit you had, it took people there, it took them to have the conference, et cetera. And coming along the line now, this is the end result. I haven't been to the land. I haven't been there. I've been to Ghana, but I haven't actually seen my plot in real life. But I trust that it's there. I trust that the process is happening. So even though it's taken a long time, I really do believe that the time element, it can be frustrating, but, and also the, the education that people might have can be frustrating, but we just need to have that sense of patience with each other and know that this thing will happen because it has happened. The land is here, people have built their, their um, houses on the land, they've, they've developed, they're living there now. So from nothing, from the idea to now, it's actually happened. So I'm just asking people just to, have that bit of patience, which we know it will happen. And with, with other people coming in and giving us these ideas, you know, it will definitely be fruitful in the future. Okay. Yes, I appreciate you, Maureen. And that, that, that's it, um, telling people that it's uh, that journey. But um, yes, um, where we started from was, I'm sure when you remember seeing that video, we were walking in, we was like, where's the land? Where's the land yet? And my son is like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And then you walk on the land and you're like, is this it? And it's like, yeah, it's raw land. And people and then people are like, are you gonna build all of this? Here? I was like, yes, we're gonna we're gonna get it bulldozed down, we're gonna lay it out. And you know, things that um that, you know that the professionals learn, you know, when they go to you know, those kind of schools to do development. But you know, we learned it just organically from just being in the country and you know, figuring things out. But yeah, the, the main thing is that we, we have had too many people in the past that have just been running to certain deals with land and it's just best if we just like just get it together and live by each other and look out for each other since you know most of us get along each other and we know each other for a while uh so yes my sister you know that's the thing if it is um i'm telling people if there's somewhere else between myself Aziba, and the people where we are we can just get things taken care of that way 
you know, we just, you know, things are moving, even if things are moving slow, it's, it, at least, at least it's moving, you know, you don't have to wait for a group of us to come back from America and be there, regardless if I'm there or not, you know, we have it set up to where we just keep things going. So the goal is, uh, you, know, you know, when you're ready to build, you know, we just get you a builder and we just work it out little by little, you just start building. So right now, um, just waiting for all of our final paperwork uh, survey. What I gave you is a draft, uh, but all of us, what the next set of us have is a draft. So working on our folks to push things through so we can just have the final stamp and the final signature and we can start uh, literally building. So let me know if you want me to get you that list. Oh, can I just ask one more question? Oh, can sure. you put that brother's details in the chat or send it out as an email? Um, oh, yeah, Elias, Elias partner, the information that he sent out, you know, about his environmental company. Are you talking about, you talking about one of the presentations? Yeah, the one that Kalia's Kali Okay, um, perfect. Partner. So yeah, what yeah. I do when I speak to them, I'll have them um, send it to me and then I'll post it in the uh, group page. Yeah. And get it to those via email. Okay. All right. Thank you. So yes, absolutely, sister. So yes, uh, yes. <laughs> look forward to you uh, showing up on the land and seeing it, um, and look forward to this you know, visit whenever. You, and then you know you have a good point of contact, Azibo, and our people at the office. And, and let me see who else here. And any, anything else to share? Um, <laughs> Marina, good to see you. It's been a while since I've physically seen you. <laughs> you're, you're, you're muted, uh, but but, uh, but literally just appreciate you, and you rolling with us and just you know, same as everybody else. Uh, appreciate uh, rolling with the flow. Um, and just to say, I'm glad Ghana's um, let up the restrictions. It means I can travel now. <laughs> and and even my sister, even if even in that situation, you know, we talked about earlier. This, you know, it's, it's been I tell people trials and tribulation, but I was like, you know, you don't just come to this and just build it and figure it out, and it's all uh, perfect. Uh, these are the things that uh, you know that we learn how to just deal with. So you're telling people from anywhere from, you know, you know, it's not a country you're just gonna fly into. You know, you have to get visa, and in not and even nowadays the visa process is a little difficult. Uh, where you have to just provide more things then you have to get accommodations, you have to do certain things. And, you know, you, you're, in, you're, in a, you're in a country that where you, you literally have to just want to be in and things like that. And you have to actually want to just get to know the country because then you're going through periods where from that whole process of trying to get there, you feel, you know, it's frustrating. Even like literally I'm saying to people, like some people ask me, what is a visa? And why do you have to get a visa? And, you know, these are some things that, you know, you tell people, these are things that we have to be willing to do and get done and flow with the country. And Ghana was in a kind of a free fall and people were saying that the Ghana is gonna fall apart. And, you know, I'm, real, I'm telling people, uh, the best thing to do, uh, especially, you know, it's one, Ghana is one of those countries where we have seen the country just operate to where it's just, it's consistent and stable. Uh, I tell people just work with it, but I got people hopping from country to country and, you know, I, I'm telling people, I've been to a lot of these other countries. Uh, Ghana is, you know, Ghana is great. Uh, Ghana is a flexible country where we can work with and connect with, and we have history on our side and those things. So, yes, uh, say that to um, see if we have anybody else who wants to say anything. Um, I got my two brothers on here, Steve and Nkrumah. And uh, um, hey. I is David? Let me rename him. Oh, uh, Nikki, I, I apologize. Uh, uh, guide uh, with your, your your question. Uh, it wasn't really a question. It was to build on what uh, Maureen was saying. Um, she was saying that we need to have patience, but we also need to have some flexibility and creativity around how we're employing these people. Like, for example. If they're not, if money is not the driving factor like it is for those of us in the diaspora, especially for those of us in the UK and in America, then we need to figure out other ways to entice folks to do their job and do their job well. One of the things we might want to think about is job sharing or 
uh, flexible work schedules where folks stay on for a certain period of time and then they're off for a certain period and they're on for a certain period and they're off. Maybe it's months, maybe it's weeks, you know, something like that to entice them to stay on for as long as they need to gather whatever funds it is that they need to gather and then still have their free time, which is so important in their culture, in the culture that we're about to, <laughs> we're about to be in. So, you know, try to figure out ways to get what we want while not causing so much friction and possible resentment um, between the two, you know, our cultures, because, you know, like uh, Mari was just saying, in the US and the UK, especially, maybe other places in the diaspora, but we're used to this we're used to getting it done. We're used to, you know, it's got to, it's got to happen. It's got to happen now. It should have happened yesterday, you know, that sort of thing. And that's just not the way, that's just not the way they operate. We can't force them to operate in that sort of way. We have to come up with creative, flexible ways that will work with what we're trying to do, um, but will work in their way of working so that we get better employees. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to say some more. I'd like to um, add to that. Uh, Nakia, uh, I think she just hit on something because um, like um, I'm, I'm, I'm here up in Canada and um, I'll, 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 for years um, I'd work, uh, I, like I live in the province of Ontario, which is where Toronto is and then I'd go across like Alberta and go right across the country and uh, work in construction. Like um, I used to work on like um, uh, processing facilities and refineries and stuff like that. And what happens is because we, we we work so far from home, what they do is that they fly they fly you to the job and they'll fly you back home. But we'd have schedules, but we'd work like uh, 21 straight days, 14 straight days, and then we'd come home for a week, right? And then that's how it went. And then it would just rotate. And so there's 24 hours of job that's kept on going, right? But everybody would have their turn going back home. Now, what Nakia said about the locals, right? Because a lot of times, I might, you know, something, something for whether it's church or whatever it is, will They'll work and then they'll, they'll they'll disappear for a week and they'll, they'll make an excuse up as to why they, they can't come. So I think that idea of doing that where, you know, yeah, maybe they, they work for uh, two straight weeks or whatever it is, and then they take a week off. I think that's an idea um, that can be incorporated for, uh, for them to work and, and that could be, um, you know, that can be enticing to them. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, definitely something, you know, something like that, but we'd have to get, you know, people that would be honest about it. And I think we have a couple of people that would actually be super honest about how we put the schedules together. Um, we just have to kind of survey and then come up with something creative. Like I said, just getting our stuff done, but in their time and the way they do things. Right. right. Yeah, that's an idea. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, as we uh, build a workforce there, we'll be able to work out different flexible options. Um, the good thing about it um, is most of the people that, that we plan to use and deal with is uh, the people that, that are currently this, uh, in the town. Uh, you have a young generation within the next few years. You know, they're 18, 19, 20. Uh, so, uh, and... Uh, and you can um you can do many things uh, we can build um beyond us places of uh, work uh, place of residence so that's why i want to figure out how we can work on some uh, funding options because we all we all have great ideas we all have been having great ideas and how we can make this community move and develop it's trying to figure out the money part of it and uh, with that, you know, we can create you know, nice incentives for people to be a part of uh, you know, our town and, you know, we can work and build together. So Nikki, Nikki and Steve, um, and that's, um, that's, that's, uh, that's the goal. But uh, trying to get to get there, and then also another thing that we have to add into the elements of thing is 
you know, great training. You know, it's good that we have a lot of uh, technical and business people that uh, in our group. That's the great thing about it. And um, you know, depends on um, you know in the, in the world of uh, technical and business, you always have to train. So I just really honestly feel like we can train a generation of children, including the ones that we have with us and bring with us, and yeah, and just expand from there. And in so um, they're building certain work ethics and building certain you know, ways of, of doing certain things efficiently, not trying to say that uh, we have the best ways of how to do everything and things like that. But since uh, most of us are you know, expert in different uh, professional fields, you know, we have, you know, we have seen the difference. So I'm always telling people that none of us are coming to kind of control or tell people what to do is this. We know what we know, you know, we're, we're in environments uh, where we know how to get things done. Um, so that's one of you know, our long-term solutions um, as, a, as a people and things that we can literally just uh, uh, get done. So with Azebo being there and him building energy with the, the youth and us trying to work with um, the orphanage, you know, that could be a beautiful uh, future right there. Um, so, and uh, as I explained to the chief, that that's part of our energy is to this, you know, because he's always concerned about opportunities for the, you know, especially for the young boys. Because as you can see, when you get to the town, there's nothing there. There's no employment and things like that. So we're the ones that's been creating a little something as far as homes and the small development we've been doing. So, however, we can flip those things to make them work. Um, you know, I'm sure we're qualified for a whole lot of grants and things like that. It's just um, being honest and real with people that uh, uh, things like that I'm literally trying to learn and I'm seeking help and open to help and open to figure things out and open to develop this nonprofit um, business I have, which is our Bomani Technology and Business uh, Support INC. Uh, it's a nonprofit, but it's not a 401c3 yet because there's other things that need to be done. You know, but that's um, you know, the initial energy and to go after uh, technology and business contracts. Uh, you know, while we're moving around in Africa, we can keep people working here and make our money from that also. So, you know, these things are all possible and we just got to go after it because um, you know, our ancestors paved the way to create opportunities for us and it's in the system. You know, it may not be a reparations people that's going to get a check and hand out, but you, know, you can work these systems and I'm learning a lot more from it than I'm open more now to, you know, to other aspects of um, getting what we need to get done. Because when we look at everything, everything that we're drawing up and we talk about, it's the money adds up. You know? So a group of us need to just go after the funding. So just want to know who's really down with that. Um, and I will be, you know, reaching out to people in general. But anybody want to share any other ideas or anything, you know, go ahead and speak on and as a matter of fact, Nkrumah, hopefully you can open up and say a few words or something, but that when we're joining the calls, we'd love to just hear from everybody. Or yourself, Steve, anything else you'd like to share uh, beyond uh, ideas about the shifts and work schedule? Uh, just that. Uh, um the um just uh no I, I, just a presentation that was uh made earlier on with um i believe it was um uh Kalia as, a, as a, a partner there um uh I, and harry also i think those are those are i think those are all great ideas and um you know like i said like you're saying the, the ideas are good but it's just um now it now comes down to funding and, and putting this thing together right because i mean you know all these things with you know with with the solar with the with the with the with the, with the water like i mean uh even um biogas systems that can put in place i mean these are things that these are utilities that we play we pay in the west and, and then a lot of money comes out of our pocket every month just to just to maintain um maintain our homes right and that's where i mean to me that's that's where the wealth is going to occur man because you're going to take that money put it back in your pocket use it for investment in other places so that that's that's a track we got to be on is that full sustainability you know I would excellent, but I appreciate it. And um, and that's um, building from the ground up uh, out there in the you know, out there in a the rural area. 
that's what it's uh, pushing us to do more sustainable and also to be innovative, but also for us to build uh, an experience in a world that we're going to have to start thinking more about. Um, all, us, all these cities are overpacked, overrun, even our cry is beautiful in many parts, but it's still you know, just over congested and that infrastructure that's billion infrastructure that's there was never meant to, you know, to house all of these people and, you know, and all the things that's built. So we're gonna have to just learn to just be out there more rural and build sustainable, uh, get back to organically uh, planting all and our mango trees and all the trees that we need, you know, and let's get back to, like you see the land, it's, it's bare. So, you know, uh, we can just plant those things up from the ground up. So that's what I look forward to us as creating our own ecosystem. Uh, and uh, we have a lake close by, freshwater lake, uh, also we're down by the beach. So when you talk about the uh, salinization, uh, that's one aspect. Then also you have water, water uh, in the um, under the ground. So and then you have water that uh, come from the sky. So you have different methods of water, and um, you know we're somewhere that's you know when we clear the land, it just grows back. It's just that fertile. So we just have to just plant more of the things that we need on the land. Uh, Nakuma, I'm trying to get you to unmute. Uh, go ahead, uh, Maureen. Yeah, but, but Mike, what is the, the situation of the town? What is their electricity and their drainage situation like at the moment? Well, outside of our land, uh, on the main road coming in, uh, they have the normal drainage. And then in the uh, community that we're in, they put all their, their electrical wires underground and they build this traditional drainage uh, system and uh, sewage and everything uh, traditional. For us, it's more set to where uh, there's no pipes or wires or lines that are going into that uh, area where we are. So in order for us to do it like that, we'd have to bring it in or we can just go full-blown sustainable. Uh, septic tanks, catch water system or borehole, um, solar uh, or wind power system, microgrid generator systems, things like that. Uh, and uh, so that was the initial layout because when I first went there, I noticed there's no power lines that's anywhere in that area. And it seemed like no one was bringing it in. So either we come up with a cost to bring it in and make it to where we have lines going everywhere or, or we figure it out to make it underground or just go sustainable. And eventually we can probably come up with some methods of this, um, of a microgrid power system to just get more efficient power. Because I still don't know how reliable our solar power is. It's, uh, it's still you know, very modern, uh, meaning just a few decades. And I'm sure it will get better. Yeah, you can, create, you can, create, you can even create a substation off a solar panel. Like, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's, 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 uh, I mean, it's uh, we, right now. It, so, solar, solar is about what? About twenty. It's about twenty-five percent efficient. Same with wind, right? So you're gonna get. <laughs> you know what I mean? But 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 you're still. That's still. That's still a lot. If you're talking about residential homes, that's it's it's still it's still, it's still enough for your home. You know, I mean, depending on how much panels that you put on there. But if you're if you're creating a farm, you can create substations and 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 um, you can still get enough out for your homes, right? But as far as um, when you start getting heavy industrial, that's where that's where that's where the problem lies. I don't think we're I don't think we're there, you know, like a, a commercial business or something like that. That I think that's all that would be good. Um, it's good enough for that. Yeah, and that's why I eventually have to uh, come up with ways to set up a, a microgrid station, uh, especially on the sixty acres, uh, because that's where you have more things that would need that kind of power. Even the business and community center, um, you're not really relying on a bunch of solar systems to really run there. So um, we're gonna have to get uh, innovative. Uh, but uh, but at the same time too, um, the right funding can fund all the different technologies. So, and some of the funding options I meant to uh, explain to people is, um, you know, working with uh, our current chief to get other investors to acquire land and do other projects. Uh, so that's also a ways we can bringing more business. With our uh, family, uh, we've gone through um, our general presentation and given updates. Just wanna see if anybody else like to share anything and or discuss anything in general. And you know, beyond that, uh, we can you know, set up another conference call and we just do some follow-up and 
you know, set up another conference call, you know, anywhere from four to six weeks from uh, now. And uh, for those who of those of us who want to work on things together, you know, we can just communicate uh, throughout the time frame and just uh, get the things worked on that we've been talking about, which is uh, funding infrastructure. And then uh, I'm taking care of survey and registration uh, with the uh, surveyor and the consultant. Uh, so those that, that's a quick overview on some of the main things. And beyond that, um, you know, throughout the week, if uh, anyone else come up with certain ideas or have certain presentations they want to share, we can, we can just share it on a group page and we can just discuss it and things like that. Um, and uh, I'm available throughout the week to uh, communicate. But yes, uh, and for every, anyone that's listening, uh, for those who out there got uh, some good grant writers and people who know how to work these programs, even though you're not part of the group or may not be interested in repatriation or anything like that, uh, and you got some good folks here in America that we can link with, just reach out because uh, you know, we need your support and your energy. So if you're watching this, just uh, link with us. Uh, we're not ashamed to say that they, you know, we need help and we, you know, because and they. Um, we're just gonna have to put all these great skills that we have together to build a, you know, a black empire and do global black uh, business uh, around the world. So whether you're looking to come to Africa with us or not, we can still connect and do business together. And Ari, uh, one of the things I meant to ask you about uh, is uh, your programs uh, with uh, black technology uh, and working with Microsoft systems. Um, so check and see if you do a lot of training with uh, Young Minds and if you have any nonprofit business that you have that are attached with your regular um, corporate business. That... Um, not at this time, but I can look. I do training, yes. I've trained uh, other uh, companies and other people companies, but not children. My wife has, has trained on a large scale like that. And you're connected to nonprofits. You got to come on. You about to mention? Yeah, my wife is more of an yeah. expertise on that. Uh, yeah, I've done training for uh, young adults, like teens, um, as well as like some middle tween um, types. But then also um, on the elementary school level, like teaching them how to code using uh, things like. Um, uh, dang, I forgot what the program's called. But there's a there's a program that you could use to help teach kids to code um, and in, in an easy um, uh, pictorial, interactive type way. And then some of the nonprofits, uh, I have worked with nonprofits, but we don't have a nonprofit set up for international. All right. All right, uh... Yes, and uh, you know, eventually uh, we can um, set one up for um, where we are because Aziba is already doing the work anyway. Um, this, uh, we just don't have it uh, registered and set up. So, and and, and in a lot of other cases, uh, you know, we're, we know we're doing the work. I just have to, you know, we have to figure out just to make it uh, work to where we can get access to um, uh, some of those computers that I hear other people getting all over the place. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for our, for our students <laughs> in the town and our office. Um, Yeah, there are a few grants and stuff that we can look into that we might be able to see where you get computers and things like that. Nonprofit computer, yeah. And programs and discounts on technologies. And so that is the energy, you know, you know and on a you know, separate note, I'd definitely be reaching out to both of you um, and, you know, with us, you know, so we can just also talk privately and go to a few things. So definitely appreciate the, Supporting the boost of energy and everything, uh, and uh, and deciding to join the you know the work party on us figuring things out. Uh, not everybody want to be a part of this party. Uh, <laughs> I know it's frustrated and things like that, but we have to like put. And all of us are well talented, and we have a whole lot of skills and background and connections. You know, somehow we have to just figure out and just make it work to where we can just have our you know have something set up to where you know, we have a town full of black ownership and. You know, we have expanded our operation. Uh, Nick, oh, I thought it was raising the hand. Is that a clap or raising your hand? That's a clap. 
That's cool. <laughs> so, but yeah, appreciate the energy. And um, as you can see, you know, we're keeping this uh, dream of energy uh, forward. Um, it's um, it's a bunch of us out here that's uh, claim to be building communities. And I tell the rest of them the same thing too. Just, just uh, hang in there, um, you know, because I know the uh, beginning, you know, everyone is all excited and things like that. And then when it comes down to the work and other things, then people start disappearing. But I tell them that's the nature of things. I, I don't take it personal. Let's uh, let's uh, just, uh, the more, because I feel like the more that we get done, the more people are going to start, you know, and eventually it'll be contagious. So I'm just, um, just trying to just keep motivated and excited and keep working on it. And I'll be sharing any updates I have whether it's any of these contracts or if I make some breakthrough on something else. So family, if uh, no one else have anything else to share, appreciate everybody uh, joining us tonight. And once again, family, this is Bomani Tamba live uh, on our Black Star Pan-African Community meeting for January 22nd, 2023. And uh, we're keeping everybody posted and uh, everyone take care and have a good night. Have a good one. Good night, brother. All right. All right. Take care. Peace and blessings.